the, uh, obviously became apparent perhaps after November, the, uh, the move to elections the next year and the sense that the CPA's days were numbered and that its ability to make, uh, carry on with momentum uh, to, to take the lead in running the country um, w w w would soon be passed. It sort of almost became a lame duck uh, uh, after this, uh, as, as 2004 started. I think that uh, adjustments were made after the 15 November agreement, and at the same time as that agreement, Ambassador Bremer had a decision from Washington as to what the handover time would be with discussion with the United Kingdom. Jack Straw was present in Washington at that time. And the end of June 2004 was decided upon. That meant that the lead-up time had to be planned for in a more definite way than had been possible previously. And Ambassador Bremer was very clear in his own mind that there should not be local elections because that would interfere with the process of the national elections he was trying to plan and the agreement on the tr transitional administrative law. Actually, actually, the local administrators had done a lot of good work to get democracy going in the localities, which I and others felt were conducive to the way we wanted Iraq to go, but that was brought to a halt by the change of tactics in designing the lead-up to June 2004. Yes, that was true. I mean, this is the sort of thing I was thinking of. Uh, and we've heard from Sir Hilary Sinnott about, uh, in a sense, he, he felt that this meant uh, that quite a lot of good work that, that was underway lost its momentum uh, at that, part, that point, and you're, you seem to be confirming that. He, yes, and you've also heard from Sir Hilary about his desperate search for resources. Yeah because although he knew what he should be doing, he didn't have the instruments to do it with. And did you see part of your role in, help, in persuading uh, Bremer to make sure that resources did go to the south? Um, no, I wasn't asked by London to do that because I thought that London was feeding in resources to the south. Um, I asked the occasional question about whether more than 2% of the overall American resources to go, should go into this very important region in the south, and a, a bit of money started flowing to the south, but not much more than that. In all of this, was, there was still that separation in the American mind between the British area and the rest of Iraq, which was their area. But that, I mean, doesn't this, this illustrate the whole problem? The, the British area was dependent still on American resources, uh, because, as, again, as we heard, we didn't have sufficient resources ourselves to do what was necessary. We hadn't resourced it sufficiently. Um, this had to come from the money that the, the CPA had to spend. But you yourself were not in a position as a sort of a, a joint uh, administrator to say, yes, that's where it should go. It had to be done in this roundabout way from Basra to London to Washington and back to Baghdad. Uh, yes, I wasn't in, in a position to do that. Um, Ambassador Bremer, if you remember, had been to Congress in uh, September, got $18.7 billion uh, out of the Washington system, and it was his job to actually very little of that was actually disbursed during the coalition period, only about $600 million. But he was feeding money into the north, the center, the northwest, northeast, rather than to the south. Okay. Perhaps I mean, there are some things we haven't gone into, and maybe, Chairman, this will be a matter for private discussion. But I think it is worth bringing out in these public discussions uh, the point that I made to London in my first visit back in October 2003, um, that the whole effort in Iraq is going to be won or lost in the centre. I saw London as being very concentrated on our particular responsibilities in the southeast. Uh, that was what the Wednesday morning meeting of the chiefs and staff talked about. That's what the Iraq ad hoc cabinet committee talked about. And I made the point uh, to ministers that they needed to pay more attention to what was happening in the centre and to remember that although they had appointed me 
to represent UK interests in the centre. And although we had 50% of the responsibility, if we put in 2% of the resources to the whole of Iraq, I could not have 50% of the influence on the ground. I was likely to have something closer to 5% of the influence because money means influence. Uh, quantity means influence with the Americans as much as argument or position of first ally. And just as my final question, how much of that do you think was understood uh, both when you sent it back in October and perhaps by the time you left in March? I was personally never satisfied that London focused enough on the centre. We had excellent major generals as number two to the American military commander in Baghdad. We had um, good advisers to him uh, and to me. Um, but we did not have the weight uh, or the resources to offer to the Americans for the whole of Iraq to catch their attention when we had disagreements on policy. One of which, if I may take the opportunity to respond to Sir Roderick's earlier question, was the putting down of a veto over the disbanding of the public economy in Iraq under Tom Foley, who was responsible for those economic matters in, uh, in Baghdad under Ambassador Brummer, when we said that we would not, under our responsibility under 1483, go along with the disbanding of the public sector industries in Iraq because that would create too much, dis too much unemployment at a difficult period in Iraq. That was the only formal veto that I put down. But on the whole, we always had to get our arguments through by constant reiteration, by working different parts of the system, by going to the Iraqis and influencing them, rather than anything top down. Thank you. Martin. Yeah. Roderick. You stressed many times the frustration you felt that we weren't putting enough resources in not enough resources into the south, not enough into police training, not enough into the centre in order to have influence there. Where was the blockage? Why was the British government not producing enough resources? It goes back to more than the British. The, the, the most basic error that was made in the whole planning for the our post-conflict phase in Iraq uh, was not to set the American military the mission of administering Iraq after the war was over. In my view, General Tommy Franks was given the wrong mission to invade Iraq, get rid of the Saddam regime, and hand over to civilian administrators. He should have been given the mission of getting rid of Saddam, pacifying Iraq, making sure that Iraq was a secure military area, and then handing over to civilian administrators. So there was an under-resourcing, a misunderstanding of the difficulty of the mission right from the very beginning. London was not in a position to, or did not, question that setting of missions. So, the control of the security situation was lost from the earliest days after 9 April and was never recovered. And you can't do a political process or an economic process without security. In addition to that, as far as the political process was concerned, no Iraqi leadership was identified in reality and with justification as being the leadership to which we would hand over in the phase four period. So there were two very considerable deficiencies.